Hello everybody, my name is Ace Face. Today we're going to be doing the T6 Abyss in the Devoter. We've seen this, if you've seen my previous videos, you've maybe seen that the Devoter is pretty potent in the Abyss just because of how much it can tank. It does the T4 Abyss really well in a really cheap fit. Now I'm going to go all out on the bling. So I'm going to like put really expensive modules on this ship and it just slapped the T5 real good. So we're going to try to see if we can bring it through the T6 Abyss. The thing with the T6 Abyss, I think it will have problems. I Even though I've spent so many billions of ISK on this ship right here, this is the test server, so you know, just uh, I'm not trying to say that I've, you, this is using it on tranquility. But um, the thing is, with this ship, it could I think it will potentially have problems uh, with the time. The time will be the main uh, problem with this ship because it has so good tank, so good tank. I can do the T4 perfectly fine when it comes to the tank with tech two wrappers and no implants. Now I've got Asclepian implants, full implant set, and I've just got C type medium armor pairs. And I already have more tank than my Gila with A type multi spectrums, A type, A type, everything just maxed out like that. The thing I couldn't, I could even put more tank with A type medium armor pairs. However, the reason I don't have this is because the A-type armor pairs, they use more power grid, and I tend to have a bit of a power grid issue with this this, uh, sh this ship right here. Even with uh, the Thurifer large cap battery, it's a pretty uh, a pretty expensive cap battery just because it has a very low uh, uh, power grid requirements. Even then, I have problems with putting any bigger armor pairs and just C-types. Um, the thing I could have maybe done is put some like faction pulse lasers because they would use more less power grid but even then uh, the, that will be problems because for some reason the tech 2 pulse lasers do more damage than even the faction ones and i find that to be strange because i'm used to them always doing more damage but either way um, this ship is a really tanky ship and it's not because of its armor repair rate it's just because of its crazy resistances and since we've got a reactive armor hardener this makes us have even better resistances as time goes on so all in all tank is not an issue the main issue will be just killing stuff as quick as possible because we have, you see, we had like 700 something DPS and I'm using like 5% implants of two 5% implants for damage. So one 5% for surgical strike and I've got one 5% for the, the medium energy turrets. And that, even then, we don't have a particularly amazing DPS and we've not got a particularly good range either. So we, the time to kill stuff is going to be one of the big challenges if, if I predict what would kill us if we do now die in the T6 Abyss. But we'll see how it goes. Um, I don't think, and just straight off the bat, I personally speaking, I wouldn't use this in on Tranquility just because I feel like it won't, it'll eventually die to bad luck. But I want to just see what's possible here. That's why I'm doing this. I want to see what's possible on the test server. And maybe if it would perform better than it does. Because you have to think the, this a little bit now. Oh, like, see that big hit right there? Just one shot at our shields. But uh, when the Gila in the, that I've got, we don't want to just stagger our reps a little bit because we're taking big hits right there. Okay, just wait until it's halfway. There we go. Because if I just, I'll maybe over rep if they're all going in unison. Um, in the Gila, uh, my T5 Gila then, it has um, 700 TPS, about the same amount as I have with Conflag with this ship. Um, the only thing is, uh, there's a bit of an upside towards having like ammo the way we've got now. Because when we have, you know, pulse layers, then we're doing instant damage. Uh, the thing is, when we have, you know, drones and missiles, especially drones, then it takes a bit of time for that DPS to apply. So even though we have 740 DPS, it could work out a little bit better than my T5 Gila. But still, it's not uh, it's not the level, I would say, of my T6 uh, Gila. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that even though we've got low paper DPS, it could be a tiny bit better than the Gila. But I actually don't think it will make a whole lot of a difference because uh, it's uh, still my T6 Gila does more damage. And also there is a bit of a factor that we have to get close to the enemies to do a lot of damage. And the whole thing with the, the Devoted is that it's a very tanky ship, but it's also not only a quite low DPS ship, it's also a pretty uh, slow ship as well. So it's not like the, the fastest boy. It's not like Usain Bolt, okay? <laughs> it can only go 500 meters a second at max speed and that for a cruiser is pretty low. Uh, Magila, which is even that is a pretty slow ship with an afterburner, can go, um, I think it is 700 meters a second. But there could always be the possibility to put a, 
a blinked afterburner because I've got a crappy compact afterburner. So maybe I shouldn't complain, to be honest, at the speed. But I put that there because of fitting requirements. The fitting requirements I had, or the fitting... I had a bit of problems with power grid, as I told you guys before. So I just wanted to, in every kind of way, reduce the amount of... Um, reduced the usage of the power grid because this ship for some reason i just have so much power grid issues i never really have that with other ships but it also has a bit to do with that. i've got two rigs that both increase my power grid so if i uh, or increase my power grid usage so if i were to train the uh, energy weapon rigging and the armor weapon rig uh, armor repair rigging uh, skill it would reduce the penalties because those rigs make me use a little bit more uh, power grid so I think that could be something that could improve it. But the only thing I would really change if I had more power grid was, would be to upgrade the repairs. I could put the B-types. And even then, it's plenty amount of uh, EHP per second. We have so good EHP per second, more than my T6 Gila. And that's even before we've spooled up the reactive armor harden. As time goes on, we'll be doing more and more damage or take be able to withstand more and more damage because our reactive armor harden is going to harden up our armor to a natural degrees <laughs> so this is a this is a really that's one thing that's pretty unique about armor tank ships that you don't have about uh, shield ships this is something i've been thinking about a lot recently like why don't shield ships have or why don't armor ships have extra large armor pair why don't why do shield ships always have like these really big armor uh, shield boosters that can even be fit on cruisers? Like large armor pairs can't even be from really. It's really difficult for them to be fit on the cruisers. But to be honest, I feel like they all have their niches. Like they're just it's they they try CCP. I feel like they've tried to make them unique. Um, it feels a bit abstract just to make them different for the sake of being different. But but I guess. Uh, it's just that they wanted a bit of variety there because you don't have anything like a reactive armor hardener for the uh, the shield guys. And that was, I initially I thought that multi spectrum shield hardeners were like reactive armor hardeners because the the multi spectrum shield hardeners initially were called adaptive invulnerability fields. And adaptive invulnerability field sounds you know a bit like you know sounds like uh, something that would adapt over time, but. No, that wasn't the case. It was just a generic, all multi-resistant, omni-resistant uh, module that boosted all resistant types. So uh, they don't have any, and I think it would be really OP if they were to have, because this is a pretty powerful module, especially if you are up against the ships that, or just against uh, in, a, in an extended fight, then you can get really high resistances of certain types and tank so much. Uh, look at our kinetic resistance right there, 84%. Our EM should be even higher, just so you know, we're in the electrical side, so we are reducing the amount of uh, EM resistance we've got. But let's see, time, not so good, we're approaching the 6 minute mark, and we are in a best case scenario for when it comes to time completion, just because we've got the minus 70% EM resistance, and that obviously will be better for time, because, you know, it'll take faster, easier time to kill them, because they've got lower EM resistance. So we'll make our way towards the transfer conduit. Because, you know, we want to be a bit smart in our paths we take. And just go go towards this thing right here. Um, an interesting just thing that happened this morning for me is just that um, I'm playing this, uh, playing EVE Online in the morning right now. And uh, I usually like to play EVE Online in the morning if I have a day off. Because uh, that's the case today. Uh, just because I feel the most fresh in the morning. So I feel like uh, it just feels better to play in the morning. I'm not a big fan of playing EVE Online at night. Especially... When I talk to you guys, I am usually feeling very tired. So I can't really be bothered to talk to anyone at night time. So it takes takes a lot a lot of energy out of me to talk a lot. I'm not really a particularly talkative person in real life, <laughs> but um, maybe you'll see it otherwise in these videos. In the and it's just um, I feel very fresh and uh, love to. Uh, I feel like I've got so much energy early in the morning, or not early. I don't like to be up early in the morning, but it's pretty in the morning at least. And an interesting thing that happened today is that it wasn't supposed to be a day off today for me. It said in my schedule that I start nine, like, and today was a uh, was supposed to be like a really chill day because um, I had just some Zoom lectures. You know, the, I'm a medical student studying to become a doctor. I'm about two years away from becoming a doctor, and uh, we have Zoom lectures. Yes, we have Zoom lectures, <laughs> uh, just like oh, most of the other 
uh, universities out there. And the thing is, uh, we also have a lot of like clinical stuff where we go to the hospital and, you know, essentially are like doctors or, like, you know, are with another senior doctor and he teaches us stuff on the way. And uh, something I did, it was a pretty tough day yesterday, like a really long day. And uh, I, in fact, uh, did for the first time like a proper procedure on a patient. So he got some like rust in his eye, some like working and then he got some kind of like uh, metal bit like machinery or something it came like this tiny bit of like like a uh, metal rust engraved in his eye and it uh, and uh, i actually removed it so what i did was i used this like microscope that you like zoom and then the head is in place of the patient and there's like microscope i look in the eye and i very carefully with this tiny metal rod had to scrape out that thing from the, his eye. And it was like right, almost dead center on the eye, like very close to, like on the iris, like the colored part of your eye. Like, you know, for, I've got brown eyes in real life. So it'll be, it'll be on like, the, you know, the brown part, like very center of the eye. So it can, it affects uh, your, uh, your sight a lot. You know, the, this metal scrape, because, you know, slightly blocking the part of the, the eye. It was very close to where the part of the eye you can see from. So uh, I did that, I removed that, and I was uh, pretty shocked that uh, the doctor allowed me to do it. And also, it went really good, because I was, uh, uh, <laughs> I was surprisingly very steady with my hand. I was thinking that I was going to be shaking a lot or being nervous, but um, I was surprisingly kept myself cool, and I managed to, <laughs> managed to remove that scrape from the guy, and it, it turned out pretty good in the end. It was a... Uh, it was, uh, it just i was just impressed that i managed to go any get anything out to be honest and it was just uh it was just a fun experience yesterday uh, but as i said before it was a long day it was pretty tiring and uh today was supposed to be a very chill day with just a few zoom lectures like you just sit here at home just like listen to me all talk it's not really much you know but then what happened was i had uh, a, a, cha a change of schedule that, no, 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 you guys are not going to have Zoom lectures. You're going to say, could I just have a full day off? I was like, what? And I was sitting here in the morning on my computer uh, waiting for that. And then as I, everyone, no one's there and I'm the only one there. And apparently they just straight up just cancelled it for no reason. Just cancelled it like that. I don't know why. They just, they just did that. And uh, apparently we should have known this because some student in my university had, you know, contacted the, uh, had like got some email from this supervisor and put it on Facebook. I particularly speaking, I don't, I try to reduce the amount of time I'm on social media or Facebook in general, just because it's quite addictive, but also just to, I feel like I'm sometimes just looking at it for the sake of it, not really doing anything on it. And, uh, I, uh, let me get close to this bed Mac here. Um, uh, so I was being, you know, a little bit like responsible, not, not go or trying to be a bit disciplined, not just go on Facebook unnecessarily. Uh, I didn't get any notification about this, but apparently I should, uh, I should have seen this from this one student. Uh, and, uh, I was just sitting here like an idiot here in the morning just <laughs> when I would have actually had a day off and could have slept in, but, uh, that's a little bit of a, how do you say? Uh, it's a, uh, I mean, it was already supposed to be an easy day and then getting the whole day off it. I, I, I don't really deserve that, but it was a nice surprise. So that's why I'm playing EVE Online right now. Uh, but it's just a bit annoying, you know, when you on purpose try to avoid social media, but then for some reason, the course administrators are too lazy to send an email to all students. They send it to one student and then expect everyone else to see that. I just, I think that's just silly right there. Assuming that everyone is on social media all the time. That's a, a bit silly right there. Yeah, I, I always check my emails, not always my Facebook. Like, well, can't, can't you use your emails? Is it the, the way professional people should be using emails? Uh, that, that's what, at least why it seems to me more reasonable. Okay, enough ranting of me about my uh, my university life. Let's go back to killing some Vila uh, Vedmax. And I don't think that I've been pretty efficient because I've been, I think I've been ranting a little bit too much that our time is not particularly good right here. And I think it has to do that I've not been webifying them enough. If I webify them a bit more, then I should be able to, I think, uh, take out these guys more easily. And so that this acolyte right here took a bit of damage. And we'll go to the transfer conduit and uh, uh, transfer conduit and stay in range. The, um, this is what I'm talking about when I've I've mentioned this quite a few times. I don't like using unbonus light drones in the abyss. 
The abyss is a dangerous place for drones. One of the places which drones uh, get nightmares about. And uh, I, I am really not a big fan of just deploying these guys unless it's really necessary. Is one Deviant Automatic Suppress, they can just stay in there for a couple of seconds or one NPC just decides to aggro them, they're dead like that. They're just dead straight away. So, uh, it's a very dangerous place for for the rogue drones, not the rogue drones, um, for my own drones. And I think that the... Uh, it's, it's like, I try to keep it as a habit not to use them too often, but it also is bad because, you know, I'm missing out of DPS on the table right there. Okay, um, go for Tanglers. Tanglers, I think, is what I'm going to go for. I don't want to lose... Oh, this is really cancer. What am I doing? I should be uh, having grouped. Okay, let's group this guy. Conflag this guy to death. This is going to be a bit of a tough wave here, guys, because we've not got a whole lot of time. We have to kill stuff uh, quickly. We have got a tracking pylon, which is really good. Come on. Give me a little bit. Of there we go. Good, good, good. Okay, to kill this Tangle over here. Come on, we're going to be a bit stressful now. Uh, six minutes left. Okay, six minutes. Yes. I'm going to take out all these small stuff. Then we're going to go for uh, the the Drekovax last, I think. That'll be a good idea. Because um, I don't want to have... Well, I don't know. Maybe it would be good to, good to go for the Drekovax. I think there's a lot more remote repair things going on with the Drekovax. You see, they're all remote repairing, the small stuff. But I, I think maybe it would be better to go for the for the, the small stuff. Oh, we're losing drones even. Because they will die quickly and they'll maybe not switch as fast to their remote repair modules. I don't know. Shoot him, please. There we go. One-shotted. There we go. Now we've got this guy. Approach him. There we go. We're getting ghosted down with the tracking disruptors, I think. So we're not got the best range, but we still should be able to should be able to pull through. I hope this is a bit stressful now. You know, with the the time being not so good. This is what I'm talking about, guys. Time is a bit problem. Uh, obviously, I could have been piloting more efficiently, but in that Vila wave, especially, I was not doing anything right there. But I still think that uh, this is not something I'd want to risk. I think four bill is the total price because the implants are very pricey. That's the main thing, not the actual ship itself. That's one thing I think that is good in general. If you put a lot of ISK on your implants, that's good for in terms of abyssal gankers because abyssal gankers they like to they kill your ship, but they very rarely kill you. Manage to kill your pod like it's quite easily because uh, pods just warp out straight away, and they anyway won't get your implants. So there's not really much reason of trying to go out of your way to kill it anyway. Um, so the abyssal gankers will, you know, go for your ship. So if you keep the price of your ship down, then it's, it helps a little bit to reduce the burn or reduce the the trauma of the abyssal gankers. <laughs> okay, we have to get close to these Drekovax, otherwise we'll not we'll run out of time because we need to be able to do this do this quickly. Oh my god, time not so good. And why are they kiting? I'm kiters. Can you not go towards the gate? Why did they pull me out of range of the gate? And they're almost going faster than me. Look at that. 400 meters a second. Oh my god. This is not going to be good. Look at this. We're going to probably run out of time. Just because... Oh, okay, screw it. I'm just going to overheat my afterburner. Because we need to get in range. This is ridiculous. We're going to also have to... When we are in range of this uh, pulse laser, I'm going to have to overheat it as well. This, this, is, uh, this is not good. This is not good. What, what range do we have if we overheat this? 18 kilometers. Okay. I will need to maybe start overheating uh, to get in range of this guy too. There we go. Web of him a little bit. There we go. And then we just do one cycle like this. Stop overheating this because I don't want to just do too much overheating. Ah, come on. Yep, I think we've uh, we've sealed our fate here. This is not a good time. Look how far we are from the origin code. They're just kiting me like little scrubs. Oh my god, this guy. Oh, this is not going to be good. We're tanking. Look, can you see here? We're tanking completely fine. But um, uh, the, the actual uh, the DPS that we're getting here is not good. Not good. It has a lot. Uh, well, I mean, we've got, you know, okay DPS. DPS. I'm not okay, but slightly below average DPS. But it kind of it makes everything worse that we've got very short range. So we just uh, everything goes a lot slower because we have to get close to stuff. Uh, and then there's another one I've not locked up. Oh, I thought there were only these three left. Okay, let's start making our way towards the transfer conduit. Keep the range of our conflag just so that we can 
sort of, uh, you know, minimize the time it takes if we can. There's always a tachyon cloud here, maybe, but it's not perfectly in range. Ugh, this is annoying. Just to webify this guy a little bit. There we go. Ugh, this is annoying. This is annoying. There we go. Stop here. Just stop here. Let's just stop here. Approach this guy again, maybe. Oh, the, it's going to go faster for each Drekovac we kill, though. Just because they've got remote repair modules, so there's going to be less people remote repairing them. The the quicker we... The more of them we kill. That's good in that regard. Okay, let's get close to this guy. Oh, yeah, a little bit closer towards the gate. I'll stop here. Oh, I'm not shooting. Stop! Oh! The ammo, I think. It was not shooting. I was just spamming the key. Could also be lag. But I think I wasn't uh, both not paying attention, but also something happened with the ammo. Because uh, the... Oh, that would probably start, probably start a little mistake there, probably sealed my fate, because look how fast he's going down. Okay, let's move the drones here. Pop him there. Two of these Drekovacs left. And the last one will probably want to get take with Scorch. Oh, this is annoying. Look how close we were. Look how close we were, and it's all the way over there, that stupid transfer conduit. Oh, look at that, we're just... And I have to overheat a little bit here. Let's must start moving. Let's move! We gotta move! We're gonna have to overheat right here. We're gonna have to overheat this this uh, aftermath too. Okay, Scorch, let's go. Scorch! <laughs> scorch, overheat. This Scorch, do wonders, please. Get towards the transfer conduit. Ah, 40 meters. Oh, I don't think we can get in range. It's too fast away. Unless we can go in the Tachyon Cloud, maybe we can. Come on. The Tachyon Cloud is the only thing that can save us at this point. <laughs> because we're too slow to get in range of the of the transfer conduit. Where is the Tachyon Cloud? I hate the hitboxes of these Tachyon Clouds. They're really... Look at that, 20 seconds left. Good, good, we've killed it. Okay, we need to... Soon there. Tachyon Cloud, please be a hitbox in my favor. To give the commands to Recall drone, drones, please. You to have an active target. Oh, six seconds left. No, we're not going to make it. The Tachyon Cloud did not. Oh, Tachyon Cloud did not want to be in our favor. Ah, we died. Oh, we killed everything, but the Drekovacs were kiting us like little scrubs. I was so close to doing that. I'm going to definitely try this again. That was a bit silly right there. Ah, that was uh, embarrassing. I should have definitely piloted better than that Vila wave. And also, I was for a bit there not shooting him with the con flag on those Drekovacs in the end. Uh, that was a bit uh, a bit annoying. But what I'm trying to say is, uh, overall, I think the Devote is a good ship for T4 Abyss. T5 Abyss, if you bling. I don't think it's a good T6 ship. T6 ships, generally speaking, are hard to come by just because of the amount of DPS you need. Uh, it's very... In, and in many ships that can do them, just the slightest piloting error will make you not have enough time to be able to do the site. So, um, that's why usually the things that run T6s are like Ishtars, Gila's. Stuff that has a good range, good DPS, just the stuff that can really be outputting truck tons of DPS all the time. We saw, the good thing though, is that we saw that the tank was just amazing. Absolutely amazing. So that's at least a good point that we show. Prove that the tank just really does not care, you know. This was in, well, I told you guys before that this was a worst case scenario when it comes to tank demonstration. Tank demonstration, uh, or, uh, or DPS demonstration, sorry. Uh, no, no, it, it, no, it was a best case scenario for D, uh, DPS demonstration because of re the reduced EM resistance, but it was a worst case scenario for tank because our own resistances are also being reduced by the minus 70% EM resistance. So we're obviously going to be less tanky ourselves and still just went straight through, just didn't care. We just faced literally just uh, going through, just barely even moving because the 500 meters per second doesn't matter. <laughs> this uh, devote is just so tanky. Overall, a really good ship. <laughs> We're gonna have to do this again because this was embarrassing right here just th those little seconds right there i could have definitely been more on point right here but we'll do that next time we'll do that next time okay hope you guys enjoyed this video right here if you did please leave a like and subscribe i'll catch you guys later